So we're essentially commenting on the EFEP chronologically going through Dune Part 1 by Denis Villeneuve. I'm not going to go through the EFAP method in detail, but essentially they early on said, well, we're not going to go to the book. The book is forbidden. Uh, they don't really explain why, which is forbidden. Okay, fine. And the chat tried to correct them at various points, saying you're making bad assumptions, or that's not really true if they had just not even read the book, but seen the other film versions, etc., etc. But again, they insisted that these assumptions were correct and have just misinterpreted a lot of Dune. So... The first hour and 30 minutes was pretty worthless because they just didn't go anywhere. They're just debating their own bad assumptions. But let me try to be productive and not just score easy points on their ignorance because they did raise at least one sort of not full legitimate point, but at least it's half a point. And that's worth going through if you're totally new to Dune because I do think here there is probably a case to be made that Denis, it didn't screw up completely, but it is a little weird just that point about why that how how are they allowed to get away with screwing them over like this i'm assuming the counter is just going to be yeah it's a, it's a corrupt system the emperor is fucking them over i'm just like okay i don't know that the characters really react to the situation that way at all they sort of treat it like it's kind of fine mm. yeah I don't, I don't, it seems weird you see uh, any arguments for you um not really, no. <laughs> um, I, yeah, like I'm not. I, it's a I, test. I, I, is it a test? I thought it was just sabotage, and then they get killed. Like that, it would that they did it, and the emperor knows, and then he he blows them up. Mm -hmm. What is it? So was it? It's a test. And he's like, yes. It's like, what does that? What, what do you think that helps? Yes. <laughs> well, yeah, but from the perspective of uh, of uh, Oscar Isaac, like, why he wouldn't view it as a test, right? He's just viewing it as they're making it really difficult for us to do our job. The Emperor's trying to destroy and, House and again, Atreides. I Come suppose, on, catch up. We've okay, already gotten but, past that. Well, so, <laughs> so the immediate the immediate thing that I'd be thinking about is like, well, if I'm another planet in this system, it's like, man, this is gonna like make spice more expensive. I'm not happy with this. Yeah. Because, well, and... like, this severely hampers production of spice. That's going to have rock roll-on effects for the, the economy of this universe. So are the other planets that are under the Emperor, are they cool with this? Or, like, when they find out, are they going to be cool with that? Or are they going to be really pissed off? So the controversy is that they're going on about it, saying, well, wait a minute. If the Harkonnens are attacking the Atreides, how is this going to be kept a secret? It seems like it's openly known that the Emperor is hostile to them, that he's screwing them over. I don't understand. And that they're trying to find a contradiction because it seems like space travel is easy. And, of course, the resolution to this is no, no, it's not easy. Communication is limited. So there's no doubt some of this will get out. But the idea that this will be widely disseminated in the universe, right? Maybe they'll just travel to other worlds and get help, tell them the news, so on and so forth. That's a big assumption, and it's not valid, because we are shown enough that space travel is fairly restricted in Dune. Now, I've already done a couple of videos on this, so I'm going to go through this really quickly. I will try to uh, link the videos if you want more details. But essentially, they made this really weird assumption early on that the spice is fuel. The spice is not fuel. Spice basically helps the navigators and the guild, and they travel through space, and the guild has a monopoly on space. And they'd be surprised, because even if they went into the book, which they say they're not going to, we don't really get a lot with the guild. We don't get a lot with the navigators. So how the Spice and the navigators work is kind of vague, but you do get enough in terms of space travel overall that it's restricted. It's just very, very restricted. So it's not implausible that the Harkonnen attack can happen, and they can basically manipulate a lot of the story. Some details they're not going to be able to hide. They killed off Duke Leto. That's going to get out. But the problem is Denis did take out lots of parts of the subplots in the early part of the book. So in terms of, wait, how did this happen? Yeah, I myself had an issue with how rapidly it appeared that basically House Atreides was destroyed. But again, you had to do things for time. But 
In terms of the guild and space travel, if they had bothered to look closely and carefully, we do get a few hints of how the guild works. We even see the guild make a kind of cameo, and you can kind of put it together a little bit. But I grant it is a little murky the way it's presented, but if you're familiar with the larger mythos, if you've just seen the other film, not read the book, they go into much, much more detail to be like, oh, okay, the guild has this monopoly, space travel is hard, you put it together, you can see how it's plausible the Emperor and the Harkonnens can basically spin the story. But there is one major problem, which they don't touch upon as far as I know, which is the Sardaukar scene. Right, so Pitar sees the Sardaukar. After, this is after they've confirmed the conspiracy, they've spoken with the Bene Gesserit, Pitar sees the Sardaukar. And that is a bit of a major dilemma, because that's not a complete contradiction. And they also did this in a deleted scene where Duncan makes contact with the Fremen. So you're kind of like, okay, well, how hard is space travel? Like, how rapidly can someone go here and there? I would maintain it's still pretty hard. And perhaps the Duncan trip was already planned far ahead of time. So that's not a problem. But the Sardaukar one is very, very strange. And you can be like, wait, space travel is so hard or takes so much money. Like, hmm, he got there pretty fast because he's got to go back to the Baron. Because he shows up for the invasion. So you're like, yeah, I think that's a big screw up. Because the timeline in the movie, as opposed to the book, or the other, even the other adaptations, is much more firm. This one really just zips by. And that's itself not a problem. But that it's not a contradiction. But it does put into tension. Like, wait, did the guild just have an insanely fast ship? The best I can come up with would be... And this is a problem. Because I'm sure if I double check the canon, it's not true. But maybe... The Sardaukar planet and the Harkonnen planet are just really, really, really close to one another. And it's not breaking the canon because, right, this is an adaptation and you could just get there really quick. Um, well, that's possible, right? We don't get a full chart of space, but that would bring up other questions would be like, well, if it's that close, they don't need the guild, <laughs> right? Pitter would just get over there. But the whole point is the guild has a monopoly. So that's going to bring up other questions. Most of the film is fine. The restriction on space is fine. The restriction on communication is fine. They're frankly just being stupid. They just are not paying attention. They're just constantly bringing in Star Wars and Star Trek into the discussion. It's not Star Wars. It's not Star Trek. So they're contradicting themselves saying, no, outside material. But they constantly bring in Star Wars. It's not Star Wars in that way. But yeah, the Sardaukar scene, that's very tricky. I wouldn't say it's a full contradiction, but... It definitely begs a lot of questions. And this is part one. Maybe those questions will be answered in part two. But I think probably legitimately, yeah, Denis goofed a little bit. And so when I say it's very expensive, it's very restricted, there's monopoly. And you're like, well, how do you explain this article? Scene? He took some liberties with the guild, not just here. The guild don't look like that in the books either. And most fans love it because they've already read the book and like, oh, this is a nice little spin on the uh, guild. And um, yeah, I've read the book too. So yeah, it's a nice, interesting spin. But if you have not read the book, you're totally coming into this wholly fresh. This will be a little confusing because like, wait, if it's so restricted, well, how are they able to zip here and there? I would say if you look closely, it's not that easy. But yeah, the Sardaukar scene is, it's a little puzzling. It is definitely puzzling. And I will do more research. Maybe this was explained in the film. I, I don't think it was. So yeah, that, that felt gratuitous. I understand why he did it, but it didn't quite make a lot of sense.